The Jets are getting ready to start some joint practices. Let's talk about what to expect today on Locked On Jets. You are Locked On Jets, your daily New York Jets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome. This is the Locked On Jets podcast for the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It's Wednesday, August 7th, 2024, and I'm your host, John B. from gangreennation.com. Thanking you so much for making the show your first listener, first watch every day. Subscribe to the show for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you'll get new episodes as soon as they're posted. If you enjoy the show and are listening on a podcast for us, please give it a five-star review. If you're watching on YouTube and enjoy the show, give this episode a big thumbs up. It helps us out, helps other Jets fans find the podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Today we have our weekly mailbag show. Thanks to everybody who sent in mailbag questions. Each Wednesday we try and do a mailbag on the podcast. Our first question, John, the Jets are scheduled to begin joint practices this week prior to their preseason opener. What are some of the advantages you see coming from these joint practices? And that is true. The Jets, Jets are going to have a number of joint practices um, this pre, during training camp. And if you're not familiar with what a joint practice is, it's well, kind of what it sounds like. Jets are conducting a practice against another team. It's not just going to most most of these practices in training camp are just the Jets. Uh, the Jets will be competing with another team in practice, and that team will be the Washington Commanders. And typically, these joint practices happen before you play a team in the preseason. And, you know, I think that there are a couple of potential benefits to them. I think the first thing is it gives you – it just kind of gives your guys a fresh look at things. You know, obviously the preseason games are starting, but, you know, we've talked about this on the show over the last couple of days, how you get to this point of training camp and it's kind of a grind. You know, there's not really a lot going on. The All the, all the excitement that was there when you began training camp is kind of gone. Uh, you know, it's, you kind of just – you kind of hit the dog days of summer. So it's something to freshen things up. It gives you a new opportunity. It gives you a fresh opponent to face. You know, you it, training camp every day. If you're a wide receiver, you're probably tired of going up against the same corner every day. So it's, it's I think it's the type of thing it can give you a little bit of extra motivation. That, you know, give, give, gives you a fresh perspective. Uh, at, and at a point where you know you're this is a grind. You know, no players don't like training camp. Uh, you know, once you get to the regular season, you have your regular routine. It's a little bit easier. You know, training camp is a, is a grind. So I think you know you kind of. Give a little, give them, give the guys a little opportunity to get a little spark. Um, I think another benefit of this is it gives you a better chance to gauge your guys how, how they look. Um, it's you know, look, I mean, there's only so much you can you can surmise from the results of these joint practices, but you know, sometimes like when it's your guy versus your guy, again, it, like it's a corner versus a wide receiver or a tackle versus a defensive end. Again, the same guys are competing all the time. So there's a question, if one guy is dominating, is it because he's really good or is it because the other guy's really struggling? Or is it just like somebody's got a really good matchup? Going up against new new players, you know, give, giving guys the opportunity to compete against different opposition gives you a chance to gauge, you know, who's up, who's down. And as we talk a lot, as we talk about on this show, when you get to these training camp practices, unfortunately for your team, it's typically a zero-sum game. You know, every good thing that comes for your team comes at the expense of somebody else you know if you're if the offense wins that means the defense is struggling if the defense is looking good it means the offense is not looking so good so it's an opportunity for you guys to rack up some wins and it's an opportunity just in general for your team to uh your team to get a better sense of a context if a guy's playing well or if a guy's not playing well in training camp giving you know giving them a different opponent and seeing how they do it's the type of thing that can lead, lead to better evaluations the third thing that i think could come into play that's not as big of a deal, but it gives you an opportunity to see, like, maybe if there's a practice squad candidate on the team you're playing. So, you know, this week the Jets will practice Thursday and Friday against the Washington Commanders um, at the team facility in Florham Park ahead of this weekend's preseason game. And, you know, this gives you an op- this gives the Jets an opportunity to kind of, um, you know, take a look at the bottom of Washington's roster. There are going to be certain guys who you, you'll they, they'll know are either on the bubble or won't make the team. And it gives them a kind of an up up close look. Um, you know, this time of year it's very difficult to scout players. Every team has a pro personnel department um, that's you know keeping an eye on players who are cut after you know when teams trim their roster to fifty three men, particularly for practice squad candidates because any player who's cut at the end of training camp can sign with anybody's practice squad. You know, 
the Jets can the Jets just the Jets can sign players they cut to their own practice squad, but they can sign players who are cut from any team uh, to their practice squad. So maybe there's a guy who you know they, they get a look at. It's a little you know, a little bit more of an insider look than you typically get because the Jets can only see their own practices. But now when the Jets are, are practicing against the Washington Commanders, they get an opportunity to to, to get a, get a better look at some Washington guys, some guys that may not make the roster, but maybe maybe they have like the attributes the Jets seek at the positions they play. So I don't think that's the reason the Jets do it, but I think that is like a kind of a hidden tang tangible benefit. I, I've I've heard in the past that you know, that was actually one of the reasons uh, Bill Belichick. Uh, was apt to uh, hold joint practices back when he was the Patriots head coach. And it's just a little bit of a roster edge. Um, I, I don't know that it's as big as the other stuff I mentioned, but it is, you know, it is, it might be a small factor. Next question, John, do you have any concerns? It sounds like on Tuesday, a couple of fights broke out of Jets training camp. No, and I'm going to go back to what I just said. And, you know, when I answered the first question, um, you know, it gets to be a grind and you're going up against the same guy every single day. And, you know, if, you know, if you're, the tackle you've been that you've had the same defensive end hitting you every every minute of every game. If you're a wide receiver, you've been going up against the same corner. If you're a corner, you've been going up against the same wide receiver. You've been shoving all training camp. Uh, you've seen the same guy over and over, and it's inevitable, I think, in a game as physical and as emotional as football, that things are eventually going to boil over. And I think that you know these training camp fights, it happens with every team, and. Yeah, there's always a lot of discussion about it, whether it's, you know, some people say it's bad, it's, you know, the team's got to be together. Some people say it's good, the players are showing passion. It's just something that's there. It's just something that exists. It's just something that's natural in the course of things when we're talking about July and August. And, you know, what I was just talking about with these joint practices, that's a chance to kind of freshen things up a little bit. It's an opportunity to get, um, get an opportunity, it's an opportunity to get, Get your team some exposure against some different players so that they're not going up against each other all the time. It's a chance to, to freshen things up. And, you know, sometimes in these joint practices, uh, fights break out as well. Actually, the last time the Jets did a joint practice with Washington, I believe it was 2018. I was there. It was in Richmond, Virginia, ahead of a Jets preseason game in Washington. And uh, Washington, the Washington team conducted its training camp in Richmond, Virginia at that point in time. And it, 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 to, it, I, to me, like when you're conducting a joint practice against another team and you get into a fight, it's not a, a, a look. It's not a great thing, but it's that can actually be the type of thing that brings your team together because your guys are all rallying around each other, and you, you know, so it's it, you know, you're, you guys are all kind of taking on a, a common opponent. I'm not saying like I want to see the Jets go out there and you know start fights for no reason when once these joint practices begin tomorrow, but. You know that that's a different scenario, but you know that's I think and I think like part of the reason maybe the Jets schedule these joint practices is it's an opportunity again to give just get the guys a fresh look, get the guys get, you know get, get the guys so they're not facing the same the same competition over and over, and maybe that'll reduce some of the you know, some of the fights that break out in training camp. But you know I, I don't think these are going to have lasting impacts. I mean, look, we we know situations where you know, teams have issues in the locker room when we get to the season, but I, I don't think many of them start because of some training camp fight. I mean, usually cooler heads prevail in the end and, you know, guys just kind of, you know, guys figure it out. It's usually, it's usually a non-issue by the end of the day. Everybody just kind of admits, Hey, I lost my cool. And you move forward from there because this football is an emotional game. And football is a game where it happens. Now, head on the Lockdown Jets podcast, we're going to talk about something else that happens. Something else that's going on right now. Hassan Reddick. Do we have any updates on him? Well, we'll talk, we'll talk more about the Reddick situation as we continue here on this Wednesday mailbag edition of Locked on Jets. Today's episode of Locked on Jets is brought to you by GameTime. GameTime is an authorized ticket marketplace in Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the GameTime app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, use your receipt down to the lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying Major League Baseball tickets. So if you want to go see the Yankees or Mets or some other Major League Baseball team this season, Game Time is the place to be. But Game Time is not just about baseball. Any sport you want, if you want to go see the Jets week one in San Francisco, if you want to see the Jets at some other point during the season, head to Game Time. Also, music, comedy, theater, you name it, Game Time's got it. They, give, they show you the view from your seat. They, you get a picture of the seat you're, you're going to buy a ticket from. So no surprises, no surprise obstructed views when you arrive. And, I mean, these deals are unbelievable. You can do it just before your event starts, and you won't believe the deals you'll get. So take the guesswork into buying tickets with game time. 
Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account to redeem code L O C K E D O N N F L. It's one word with no space. Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Thank you so much for making Locked On Jets your first listener, first watch every day. And a big shout out to you every day, as this is a daily podcast covering the New York Jets. We do episodes each day through the week, Monday through Friday. Let's continue now with our weekly mailbag. Next question, John, any updates on the Hassan Reddick situation? I'm starting to get nervous. And yes, uh, the Hassan Reddick holdout has continued. We're now a couple of weeks into training camp and no end in sight. You know, there was some early optimism in the first couple of days of training camp. There were some reports that progress was being made, unfortunately. I don't know if it's stalled, but we still are at a point where Hassan Reddick is entering training camp. Robert Sala was actually asked about it earlier in the week and, you know, didn't really have much of an update for us. Um, I, I'm still not overly concerned about it. Uh, look, I have some degree of concern. Whenever a star player is not at training camp because he's not happy with the contract, you can't say it's a total nothing burger. But, you know, I, I try and look at who, what the incentives are here. And for Hassan Reddick, the, you know, the the goal is to get a new contract. Well, how do you get the new contract? You have to go out this season. Either, either the Jets are going to give it to him, in which case he'll be here, or he's going to have to go out and earn it. And if he has to go out and earn it, he's got to play. And you know, the other incentive for Hassan Reddick, $14.25 million. I mean, I, look, we've seen players leave a lot of money on the table before. Le'Veon Bell, his last season in Pittsburgh uh, back in 2018 is one example. But it's not that common. It doesn't, it happens, but it's very rare. It's very rare a player is going to leave that much money on the table uh, just to hold out. Now, you know, like he's he's taking fines. He, he's, the fines are starting to add up, but I think the way Reddick views it right now is he's looking to get a new contract. So the new contract will pay for the fines and, and then some. So I, I feel like that's part of it. I also feel like part of it, you can never undersell this. And this is may sound silly to some of you, but I would never undersell the idea that if a player sees an opportunity, especially a veteran player, if a veteran player see, figures out a way that he can skip training camp, frequently he's going to take it. And I know that the, maybe that sounds ridiculous to you, but these guys don't like being in training camp. Um, you know, if I go back, and this is you know 17 years ago, I remember Michael Strahan um, held out a Giants training camp that year because he wanted a new contract and everybody knew the Giants were not going to give him a new contract. It became clear that Strahan just didn't want to go to training camp. And he was there for week one and the Giants actually won the Super Bowl that year. Um, so I think that that may, maybe that as silly as it sounds, that could be a part of his Reddick just sees an opportunity to skip training camp. Um, look, nobody knows what the future holds, but at the end of the day, do I expect him to be there week one against San Francisco? Yes. Uh, would I be surprised if, he wasn't, yes. Would I be concerned if he wasn't? Um, yeah, I would have some degree of concern if we get to you know a month from now and Reddick's still we're about to start the regular season and Reddick's not not ready to play. That's where I'll start to worry. And you know, you'd like him to be in you'd like him to be in camp for a couple of weeks because you know you don't want him to just report right before the first game. Because if he does that, then you may have to limit his snaps the first week or two just out of caution, just to prevent him from getting injured. But again, this is all a long way off. And I know that this is frustrating because we live in the age of the 24 hour news cycle. We live in the age where we want things resolved instantly, but the course of NFL news and the course of these things is long. You know, the, the, the timeline for this is not instant. And, you know, it sounds, it seems like in many ways, both sides are kind of dug in and neither side's budging. And yeah, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if some sort of compromise was eventually reached. You know, it doesn't sound like the Jets at this point are ready to give Reddick a long-term contract, but maybe they can offer some sweeteners or something like that to, you know, make it easier for, for Reddick to come back. Maybe some short-term changes to the contract. We'll, we'll see. Um, but I, I'm still not overly concerned at this point. Next question. John, it seems like Michael Clemens is getting a lot of buzz out of training camp, uh, especially with the amount of reps he's getting with the, the top unit. Your thoughts? So this is interesting to me, and it's something worth watching because – when the Jets traded John Franklin Myers, I was a bit perplexed, and it goes it, part of it was just John Franklin Myers was a good player who, you know, I, I didn't understand why the Jets traded for him if they couldn't get something better in return. I mean, it just felt like a pure salary dump. I mean, it would have been one thing over the course of the offseason if like the Jets could get good value and they there was a player they could sign to replace him. But JFM plays a, played a very particular role for the Jets defense. And the way when I watch the Jets defense, it, it feels like the defensive end spot has two positions. You have your 
you know, guy who's like Bryce Huff or Carl Lawson, whose job is really just the, the pass rusher. His job is to fire up the field to get to the quarterback. And then you have the other guy who plays almost more like a defensive tackle. It was JFM who almost plays more like a defensive tackle where he's just trying to, he's trying to collapse the pocket, but he's also trying to make sure there's gap integrity to either side of him that he can you know make a tackle. If like there's a running play to either side of him. And it didn't feel like the Jets had the guy who could replace him. Now, last year that was JFM, but the guy who backed up JFM was Clements. So part of me did wonder, and I wasn't purely expecting it because I was expecting Will McDonald to just, I was expecting the Jets to maybe scrap these roles and go with something new. I was expecting Will McDonald to step into a bigger role, and that still may happen. But it is possible the Jets view Clemens as like the JFM replacement. Because again, these are kind of two distinct roles, even though we, we list defensive end as the same spot. And again, I thought that they were just going to just turn defensive end into a singular role. Maybe they will, but maybe they won't. Maybe Clemens has you know, shown them enough. And of course, Clemens comes from that great 2022 draft class where Jets already have hit on four of those guys. You know, Jets have four good, to, you know, very good players to star level players. Sauce Gardner was a super, superstar. Uh, Garrett Wilson, Brees Hall, who are stars, and Jermaine Johnson, who is a pro bowler. I'd say he's a very good player. And, you know, if you could hit on another guy from that draft class, I mean, that would be, you know, just, you know, take that class to the next level. So I think what comes next will be something that tells us a lot. Um, I think that uh, it's too early to make definitive statements. What I just said is just a theory. It's an educated guess based on what we've seen so far. But there's still a long way to go. It could be that the Jets are just testing this out. And maybe they will go more with Will McDonald. Maybe they'll just say, we're going to have two pass rushing defensive ends going forward. We're just going to scrap the JFM role. I think that what we see in the practices in the weeks ahead, I think to a lesser extent, what we see in the preseason games. And the, the reason I say to a lesser extent is a lot of times the starters don't play in the preseason, especially you know, under the Robert Sala era for the Jets. So I'm actually not sure how determinative the preseason will be, but It'll be interesting to see if the Jets evolve this thing at all. And sometimes, you know, you're just doing it to motivate a guy. Maybe you're playing Clemens to try and fire him up at the first team. Maybe you're putting Will McDonald on the second team to try and fire him up, uh, try and light a spark under him. There's a lot that's not known right now, but it's something that's worth watching because it was something I wondered myself when they traded JFM. You know, who slides into that role? Are they going to keep that role? And there are there is at least some early circumstantial evidence that perhaps – it will be Michael Clemens. Now, of course, this weekend, the preseason is starting. And generally speaking, the preseason is not that memorable. But there are some memories of Jets preseasons past. And we're going to go into them as we continue here on this Wednesday Bailbag edition of Lockdown Jets. Today's episode of Lockdown Jets is brought to you by LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for their role. That's why you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. The Jets have a scouting department. They have a front office. That's kind of their version of LinkedIn jobs. But your small business, you know, that, it's tougher for that. That's where LinkedIn comes in. LinkedIn can be your scouting department. They can be your front office. LinkedIn is not just a jobs board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who are not actively searching for a new job but might be open to a perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. And on LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. And LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats, they may not have the time or resources to hire. So LinkedIn is constantly finding new ways to make the process easier. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. It's why two and a half million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. Again, that's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. This is the Locked On Jets podcast. Here on this Wednesday, we're doing our weekly mailbag show. Our next question, John, what are your favorite Jets preseason memories? And of course, the preseason gets underway this weekend as the Jets will play the Washington Commanders. You know, this might be recency bias, but uh, I can't shake the memory of the Chris Strebler uh, year two two seasons ago in 2022 when, you know, three preseason games, he led three comeback victories for the Jets. Uh, just memorable. I mean, you, you knew, Stre I mean, I said there was this like small percentage of the fan base that, you know, claimed that Strebler was going to be the next Kurt Warner. But, uh, you know, outside of that, um, you know, I think most of us knew Strebler was not going to be, you know, a guy whose NFL career would not do a whole lot. So, I think it's always cool in a moment like that when you have a guy who, you know, very unlikely put together an NFL career, but he'll always be able to point to like some NFL preseason game, you know, and be able to say, I led, I led three, three preseason, three game winning drives 
in an actual NFL game. Um, Matt Sims was similar in 2013. I was actually at a game, Jets Giants game, where Matt Sims led this you know, overtime win. Uh, so that that was a lot of fun. Um, one of the things that's tricky about this is that your memories usually aren't of like the the starting players because the starting players don't play a whole lot in the preseason. And you know, I go back. Uh, 22 years to 2002 and i remember the jets the jets looked unbelievable in the 2002 preseason they looked i mean they looked unstoppable especially the starters and then the real game started and the jets got off to a one and four start uh so that shows you how much these games actually matter um you know the results of these games actually matter because even the start you know, like it was the backups who won the games the jets went undefeated that year in the preseason but even the starters, when they were in there, looked really good, and it did not translate to the start of the regular season. Just started one and four. Now that was a year where they made a quarterback change. They ended up coming back and winning the AFC East after the one and four start. But it shows you how little carry it over there is between the end of the preseason and the start of the regular season. Um, so you know, it's it's guys like that. Um, you know, uh, you know, maybe uh, David Clowney and Brett Ratliff in two thousand eight. The guys were like. The back of the roster guys who you know somehow show somehow deliver. Um, you know, the, those are the guys who who really make it for me. If you want more tangible uh, examples, maybe maybe examples that are those of guys coming from under the radar and showing they can play, you could go with a Snacks Harrison or a Robbie Anderson, guys who earn their roster spot in preseason. But I don't know. I always think the guys who are the the, the heroes of these of these wins in preseason. I always think that they're the most memorable. And Strevler. You know, again, it was only two years ago, so maybe maybe I'm maybe I'm just like caught up in recent memories. But man, those that's Traveler's stretch was kind of unbelievable. And our last question, John, which Jets do you think have legitimate chances to win NFL awards this season? Well, I think the odds are very, very good that Aaron Rodgers is going to be a, a strong contender for comeback player of the year. You know, I, I think that that's yeah. You know, we'll we'll see how it, and I was like he's got to play well, but. Um, I, I think that the odds are very, if he plays well, the odds of Rodgers being the comeback player of the year are very high. I, I also think, you know, it's tough to win this award as a corner, but it's doable. And part of how you win this award is you have to have a reputation for shutting guys down. I think Sauce Gardner has as good of a shot as any corner in the league to be defensive player of the year. And yeah, you know, like there, I guess there's there's two ways you can do it. There's what the way I mentioned. You, there's also you can have a bunch of interceptions. So maybe if, interceptions tend to come and go. You know, it, it's difficult to produce big interceptions. And if you do, sometimes it's just you know, kind of the luck of the draw, where you you face a lot of mistake prone quarterbacks. Uh, Sauce has the disadvantage when it comes to the interceptions of you know teams don't throw at him. You know, teams don't teams want to stay away from him because his reputation is so great. But maybe that reputation, if he starts to build some momentum and the Jets win games and the Jets defense is as dominant as we're expecting, you know, they could they, maybe Sauce has a shot at it, you know, and maybe avenge that ridiculous two. You know, there are few things in this world when we're talking about the New York Jets that irritate me as much as the robber, the high absolute highway robbery that took place in 2009 when the voters gave the defensive player of the year award to Charles Woodson over Darrell Rivas. And essentially the rationale the voters used that year was that, well, Rebus was great, but Woodson stood in, stood in different spots before the snap. Every and That's essentially what it boiled down. It was like, well, Wilson plays, uh, Woodson plays outside corner, he plays slot corner, he plays safety. So essentially it doesn't matter what you did. It matters where you were standing, how many different spots you were standing before the place the ball was snapped. They'll never cease to annoy me. So maybe we'll get some measure of retribution, some measure, you know, payback. If Sauce eventually wins one of these Defensive Player of the Year awards, um, you know, Quinton Williams, if he put together another season like he had two years ago, I guess would be another candidate. You know, could the Jets have an Offensive Player of the Year candidate? I guess Rodgers would be the most likely guy. You know, maybe Garrett Wilson has a breakout season where, you know, he goes from 1,100 to 1,500. But I think the two that I, I think are really strong candidates are Rodgers Comeback Player of the Year and sauce defensive player of the year and anything else i mean there are some again some outside chances of some other stuff but those are those are the areas i'd look anyway that's all for today's episode this has been the locked on jets podcast part of the locked on podcast network your team every day is our motto as always if you enjoy the show hit the subscribe button where you're watching or listening so that you'll never miss an episode if you enjoy the show and are listening on a podcast horse please give it a five-star review and if you're watching on youtube and enjoy the show give this episode a big thumbs up helps us out helps other jets fans find the podcast enjoy your wednesday everybody we'll be back tomorrow to talk more jets